Today I'm talking draft bets with my friend, CEO of FTN Daily. Uh, Chris, how are you today, sir? I'm doing well. I'm ready for the draft, but uh, you know, I still got a couple more days, and uh, I'm excited about it. Yeah. Speaking of that, you tweeted two things within the last realm, last day or so, that I feel like really ring true. The first one was, if you think the 49ers don't know who they want to take, I got a bridge to sell you. How much overthink? And then, of course, the one that followed was the next 60 hours, the worst 60 hours before the draft. How this week is really rough when it comes to throwing out and spitting ball ideas, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, really, at this point, we've kind of run through every single scenario. Teams have run through every single scenario. Uh, we're just kind of waiting. So the, the 49ers traded up. I can buy that you now they really like, say, Mac Jones and Trey Lance and they wanted to make sure they could secure one of the two and, and have the time to make sure they really were 100% sold on their decision. But a couple of days out from the draft, like they know who they're taking at three. We don't need to pretend all these different scenarios. And, you know, like uh, media outlets are, are getting reports from different agents and they're running those because they're news stories. And we're just starting to run through a bunch of scenarios about what ifs because we're the media's bored and trying to create a new headline that gets attention. And, you know, that's why it's just, it's just smokescreen season. It's just attention season for these next. We're we're down to what about um, fifty three hours to the NFL draft. So <laughs> counting every one of them, can't wait for it to be here. And I, I mean, because once the draft happens, it's you know it's it's one of the more entertaining events for me all year. It really is because I I like the idea of the trades and and stuff like that. But this year, obviously, outside that top three. If you solidify Jones in that in that third third slot, it's really a crapshoot after that because when you think about that, you know Fields and Lance would still be on the table. Which, in my opinion, Fields has been my quarterback too since like two years ago. Whenever I started looking at him and Lawrence, but what value do you like on Fields and Lance outside of that top three scope of things right now? In terms of uh, yeah. all, all together NFL draft bets, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, this is one of the things that happens is that the closer we get to the draft, the more value of, of the line goes away. Like Kyle Pitts, for example, moved from five and a half to four and a half today. Uh, and it's minus like 115, but you can get Falcons to take a uh, tight end at, I think, plus 120 still. So I'd much rather go that direction. A lot of these top guys, like Chase has lost so much value. A week ago, he was plus 175 to go to the Bengals. Now he's minus 150. Uh, Sewell sits at six and a half, which is really interesting after the Dolphins move today, where they traded Eric Flowers and um, are moving Hunt inside to guard. Could mean Sewell's going there. They could be trying to um, get, uh, you know, a little a little bit of interest to trade up for Sewell because they wanted Pitts or they wanted um, Chase. So there, there's a lot of in- interesting things in this, the top six. I actually think the value beneath them is where it starts to open up um, because – with the NFL draft, you want as many outs as possible. You don't want to lock a guy into a specific spot. So uh, there's definitely, I mean, there's still a ton of value. But in terms of the top six, I think it's kind of, the, the lines have kind of taken all the value away. In Tennessee, it's sports betting has only been legal since November. Um, what at A, what advice would you give them? And B, what have you, what history, I mean, with your history, what do you think the best sporting apps are for newcomers to use? Um, I think that uh, DraftKings, FanDuel, and MGM are probably the top three right now. William Hill offers the most markets on the NFL draft, which is a reason that I'm really uh, pumping a lot of their stuff right now. I mean, they have 83 different players. I think the next closest book in New Jersey is something like 40. So, I mean, they've got guys like Kenneth Gainwell and Jamar Johnson and Amari Rogers and Rashad Weaver and Tommy Tremble. Like, they've, they've got everybody. Now, DraftKings and FanDuel will add a lot of people after day one. Um, so that'll be really interesting. But, uh, you know, it's for me, those are probably the top four books. PointsBet and Fox. FoxBet actually does a decent job offering uh, different type of lines. But what the best book is for the NFL draft and what the best book is for – um, just a new sports better is, is very different. I, I think DraftKings is probably my favorite overall book to use. And if you want to, if you're a parlay kind of guy, FanDuel offers a very unique product with their same game parlays. So uh, I have a lot of my action tied up on there. MGM does great bonuses um, and constantly give you like redeposits bonuses too. It's not just your first time deposit. 
Uh, points betting has a very unique opportunity, and William Tell's got a lot of markets. So those are probably the top five, with Fox Bet uh, being the other option as well. In the running back position, is there any value to be had with Williams, Harris, and Etienne? I think Harris is a guy that I think Javante Williams, his number we've already seen come down from about 42.5 to 39.5. I still think he goes under that. Um, I think Harris is pretty easily going to end up being RB1. A lot of dots connecting him to Pittsburgh. Uh, I think probably about 75% of teams have, have him as RB1 off uh, on their perspective board. So there's still ways to do it. Uh, one way you can kind of, instead of paying the 170, you can have on FanDuel, you can have Chase first receiver, Sewell first offensive lineman, and Harris first running back and get that at plus 150 instead of playing the minus 170. So, which basically means instead of risking 170 to win 100, you can risk 100 to win 150. So I think that's a way to do it. Uh, ETN and Javante Williams lines are, are pretty good. Those numbers have kind of come down, but those guys are obviously going to be major impacts in the, the fantasy space this year. Yeah, see, even looking on uh, DraftKings right now, I'm looking at Javante Williams. His over-under is 39.5. Do you like that line? Uh, I would lean the under. I took him under 42.5. I Ooh. think he actually may surprise some and, and end up going in that first round. Um, one bet I did the other day that's now down to 10 to 1, I got it at 29 to 1, was Najee Harris, Javante Williams, and Travis Etienne, like that exact order for the first three. I still think there's tremendous value at 10 to 1 there and has a good chance to hit. Uh, it's probably my favorite current running back bet. Yeah, I like it a lot because even um, Najee's at 25 and a half on DraftKings. Um, that's right at the cusp of the Steelers pick, right? Yeah, so he's 29 and a half on DraftKings. Um, pulling up the lines as we speak. Uh, he's as high as 28.5 on Fox Bet and Points Bet. So you can, you definitely want to do some line shopping with these guys. Every spot really matters. And people might say, well, Elliot, the teams, the, the Ravens aren't going to draft a running back. Yeah, but there's no guarantee the Ravens are actually picking 27, right? We've seen that the later the draft gets, the more likely trades are. So you want to have as many outs as possible. So never want to take an under 25.5 if an under 28.5 is available. Speaking of which, the other quarterbacks, the ones that, you know, outside that top five, um, Davis Mills has got the over-under at 67.5. What do you think of that line right now? Uh, I would take his over. I would take Kellen Mons over, and I would take Kyle Trask over. Um, historically, QB6 off the board in the last five years has an ADP of 99. Only one has gone uh, top 76, and that was Mason Rudolph who won 76. We only had one QB6 in the this century go top 70, and that was Colin Kaepernick at 36 overall. Every year we talk about quarterbacks potentially sneaking into the back half of the first round. Jacob Eason was a guy last year who had a prop of, what, 41 and a half and finished in the fourth round. Jake Fromm had a second-round prop, and he finished in the fifth round. Uh, like These quarterbacks, teams really have shown that they prioritize them in the first round or they kind of let them fall. And I think the same thing will happen with Mills. Trask and Mon, and the reason I like doing all three is I think there's a really good chance you hit all three, but you're almost locked and loaded to hit at least two of three. With Dak Prescott being the only quarterback who's been QB7 off the board um, to be a top 100 pick, and he was pick 100. So these quarterbacks tend to fall. We tend to overhype them. The, the media tends to get very excited the week of the draft, and then all they do is drop like a rock on draft. Yeah, that's the one thing that I was going to mention as well with the quarterbacks. Between Eason and Fromm, everybody loved those guys last year. And, you know, everybody thought these guys were going to go in that top, you know, top, you know, couple of rounds. And then it's like we wait until day three before we see any of them really fly off the board. Yeah, I would anticipate the same thing with Mills and Mond and um, Trask this year as well. Do you, now, outside of sports betting, I, I never really got to, do you like any of the guys outside the top five? In terms of just like as a that, prospect? Yes, as a prospect. So a couple things. One, and whenever I'm betting on the NFL draft, I don't really want to use my evaluation of a player. For sure. Um, because I think it, it can cloud your judgment. You can create bias and you start almost rooting for bets as opposed to trying to just, um, you know, make them based on data and, and information out there. So I, I try to avoid that as much as possible. But my answer is no. Um I kind of believe that you're a quarterback. You're, you ought to have like a top five grade for me because quarterbacks, if, if I'm doing a big board, they're not even on the big board. They're just their own thing. And then it goes to everybody else because the positional value is too great. And if you're not really worth being a top five overall pick at quarterback, I don't really care. 
And that doesn't mean that guys like, uh, you know, Patrick Mahomes, for example, like he was worth being a top five pick at quarterback, just teams didn't do it, right? So uh, th- these developmental guys have such low hit rates that I don't pay them that much attention. Mon, from a fantasy perspective, is probably the most interesting because he's the most athletic. Uh, but they're they're all most likely career backups. So I guess my next question to you is, is touching on the receivers a little bit. Is there any way that Jameer Chase is not the first receiver off the board? No, he's going to be the fifth overall pick in the draft. All the odds have dictated that. He's number one on the Dolphins board as well. You know, there's this whole thing that they want to they want Tua to play with the receiver he played with in college, but that's much more narrative based. It's only at one, minus one fifty five. It's all the way up to minus a thousand. So I feel very I feel very 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 confident that Chase is the first receiver off the board. I've been following along the last couple months with you getting in on some of these bets ahead of time. What are your some of your favorite bets that you bet early that are just completely outrageous right now? Uh, well, Chase, first wide receiver, is my minus one fifty five. That's now minus a thousand. I got um, Zach Wilson's second overall pick at minus one eighty. That's now <laughs> minus five thousand. Wow. I got Mac. I got Mac Jones under eighteen and a half. That's now three and a half. I got uh, Jason Phillips, first defensive lineman, at plus 350. That's now plus 100. I got over four and a half receivers at minus 170. That's now minus 300. I got Chase under six and a half. That's now five and a half. I got Parsons over 10 and a half. That's now um, 13 and a half. I really think there's a lot of value there. I got stuff like Tennessee Titans, first pick, defensive line at eight to one. That's now five to one. I got J.C. Horn first defender at ten to one. That's now three to one. Um, I've gotten guys like yesterday, for example, I bet a defensive tackle, uh, Ali McNeil, out of NC State at seventy nine and a half. He is now down to fifty four and a half. Um, so I've got I've gotten some crazy ones. I got Eric Stokes at forty eight and a half. He's down to thirty seven and a half. I've got uh, Alex Leatherwood at forty eight and a half. He's down to thirty nine and a half. Um, I was able to also just like bet certain guys middles. Like I got Terrace Marshall, both under 39 and a half and over 27 and a half. Just kind of setting up a risk free bet. I got like Ramonde uh, Stevenson, the running back out of Oklahoma at 91 and a half. He's now 105 and a half. So I mean, it's tough for me to pick an individual favorite one. <laughs> the one I'm most excited about on draft day is JC Horn, first defender. I think that's got a real good shot of hitting a ton of one. So a few more things that I was looking at. I was playing around earlier just kind of looking at some bets that I kind of liked and ones that I thought that had some really good value. And right now on DraftKings, I've seen I've seen Pat Fairmouth go in the first round in a lot of mock drafts. And right now on DraftKings, they've got an over of one and a half total tight ends in the first round at plus 435. What do you think of that line? Yeah, um, you're really looking at uh, Freemouth, right? Or Freemouth. Freemouth, yeah. From Penn State. Yep. Uh, that's who you're hoping for. Right now, his over under is um, 48 and a half. So you're really hoping he crushes that over at, you know, plus 350, like you said. I guess he's got a couple teams, potentially Jacksonville, the tight end coach work there, worked with him at Penn State. But they've got so many, they've got multiple picks in the second round before then as well. So I think they'd probably rather take him there as opposed to reach. You look at the teams at the end of the first round. I don't want to say no. Why don't we're going to pull that trigger? Um, if I, I think I would much rather just bet his under. Uh, he's he's a no bet for me as is than than take that long shot where I think you're really chasing the juice. But I think the odds of him actually going round one are pretty low. Uh, a couple more before we go here. Players to be drafted first. The Waddle Smith uh, back and forth. Obviously, DraftKings has that as a prop right now. Player to be drafted first. Devontae Smith at plus thirty plus one thirty three. Waddle at one minus one sixty seven. Do you like any of that? Um, I like Waddle when it was closer. Uh, I think Waddle is actually the Dolphins guy if they don't go Sewell. The issue is that if if they uh, if they pass and Detroit trades out, then now it's legit the Giants probably at eleven. Um, I think minus one sixty seven is a little bit too heavy. Where I would probably just pass on that, betting that all together. Any closing thoughts for the any strategy towards come Thursday after that first round is over? In terms of betting the second round? Yes, sir. Yeah, I think you really want to pay attention to what teams needed and how they addressed it in the first round. You want to understand kind of what the expectations for certain players were. Sometimes you have guys that were like over under like 42 and a half, right? And they don't go in round one and then they get bumped up to 45 and a half. 
they were probably never going to go round one anyway, and now you're getting a little bit more valuable of a line. You want to really read all that stuff that comes out that day to see, you know, if there's any rumblings of teams trying to do different things, hear about any teams that tried to trade up and couldn't, and what positions they might have been looking at to understand where certain guys are. Um, there's there's always a few really bad lines that come out early on Friday morning. Perfect. Elliot, where can we find you, man? You can follow me on Twitter at Elliot Christ, E-L-I-O-T, C-R-I-S-T, and all my draft work is free over on FTMBets.com. Thank you so much for joining me today, man. Thank you. Anytime. Let me know.